Anyway, another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left-hand corner, we have Exodia, aka Ninja, starting as the red Terran. Bottom right-hand corner, we have the blue Terran, Locosito, who thus far is up 2-0 in BSL Season 16 quarterfinals. It's a best of five. We are now on the third map of Nemesis. And I will be blunt, this could be a rough one either direction. I think Ninja, living up to his name, has shown some creativity in previous attempts. We've got the eggs that are available to open via although it takes quite some time with vultures but you can see where vultures can come from either direction so maintaining troop advantages and keeping eyes on your opponent very very important also there is no high ground and there's just a map control is huge on this actually getting mines out so you can see where your opponent's army is because this is scaling out you can see how huge the center of this map is and how much territory that is to cover to try to deal with map control concerns or troop movements out on the map. So scouting is very, very important. Mine placement, very, very important. And Vulture Micro could be another factor again. Locosito, I feel like, has won two matches already through superior micromanagement. We'll see if it ends up being a third. I doubt it being at cross positions. And I think at cross positions, this might actually favor more of Ninja's strengths. So this could be an opportunity for him to go ahead and take a game down for himself, moving out an SCV up to the high ground to see was well, he up to some trickery just going to build okay i like this he's actually building the barracks on the high ground maybe to float it to the bottom left hand corner but to get it out in the field knowing how crucial scouting is loco cito in the mine, meantime looks like he might be going for a command center first build either 14 or 13 command center potentially he's stocked up the resources and it's going to pay off for him so he's going to go for a 13 command center or sorry 12 command center even uh in the upper right, it, it, wow, in the bottom right hand corner, and it's gonna pay off because, first of all, cross spawn, and secondarily, yeah, I think this is just the perfect moment to do it. So, big economic lead to start for him. SV's in gas. This is gonna provide opportunity to maybe go for a factory response, but I think Ninja is gonna be highly disappointed by the time he manages to scout inside the base. Maybe he's thinking about going for some sort of early game cheese. I will say, this could blow up in Locosito's face if there is a quick troop flood that's able to attack from multiple angles. Again, you've got those eggs at the various directions of the base. Looks like initially sending out a scout, and I think he's going to love what he's going to see. Opposite corner. And the thing is, is also going for factory pushes, caddy corner like this, the reinforcement time is just massive. So Marine now staged out in the front. First SCV scouting. It looks like it's going to go top right, I assume, because the barracks is going bottom left. So nothing working out for Ninja. Trying to hide that supply depot. Or maybe provide it for scouting. I actually like that positioning for scouting down the line over the Zerg eggs. So I have to say, I like Ninja's building placement and a lot of the creativity therein. Initial bunker being constructed to provide some defense for Locosito. But oh, sorry about that. Keep in mind that that bunker does not cover the eggs to the north nor the eggs to the east or sorry the west no my cardinal directions SCV going caddy corner from top right that m might be able to spot the barracks incoming i don't know if that's going to be enough information to cause that SCV to turn around it looks like not there is going to be a factory into command center build vulture starting to make its way out dropping the machine shop and getting vulture speed could be very, very important here. The SCV is going to be able to walk across the lines. It's going to lose its life, but does confirm that command center. And that has to be disappointing for Ninja. Let's see if he, he does have a set. So yeah, going for the machine shop, getting that second factory down. There's already one factory in position. So it's going to be a siege tank. Also, this barracks probably shouldn't go floating out. It really needs to get in the forward position to create some sort of plug on the front. Because a standard follow-up to this is go to go ahead, get vulture speed, build a lot of vultures. Oh, never mind though. The SCV just wandering straight in, sees that machine shop, and potentially could recognize the threat of the Vulture Flood run by. This is a very wide natural expansion. This is very brave, I have to say, on Locosito's part, just walking that out. And we already have a Vulture, yeah, working on eggs to the south. So it looks like he wants, and also to the opposite direction. So that could create sufficient delay where Locosito is going to have troops to manage, but... This opens up a lot of options for ninjas. So first of all, there's not going to be a lot of troops on the ground. 
Oh, now he's following up with double starport. Gonna throw Ninja a taste of his own medicine. So wants the Wraith. I love this play actually, because the Wraith, first of all, Voltal uh, can't fight against Wraith, but that also provides a great degree of forward spotting, even in small numbers, to see what direction the Vultures are coming through. And also with the Wraith in the air, they can attack and peck away at the Vultures before they're able to break through the Lurker eggs. So I love this follow-up. So Siege Tank on the front, some Marines right there trying to take the barracks down to deal some damage to destroy that. But I like the Wraith actually is a defensive option here to just provide better visibility and mobility. And that also shuts down potential follow-up drops, which it looks like a Starport's being hit from Ninja. So great play all the way around. So that second egg starting to be opened up. There's still another set of eggs to go. The Wraith are going to be out shortly, potentially could shut that down. Two siege tanks to the front. Now the question is, with the turnaround, we do have siege check being upgraded rather than vulture speed. And there could just be a pummel. The problem with Wraith is, is they absolutely cut into, into a, it's a lot of gas, which means fewer siege tanks. So it's possible that there could be a seal follow up from Ninja. The barracks over the high ground is not going to spot forever and might even get vision on those Wraith early. So let's see if these Wraith pay off and they are, let's see if they employ the strategy I think they're going to employ. As the Vulture starting to work on the assimilator at that direction, actually working on the assim, I'm surprised they're working on the assimilator rather than opening up the eggs to create uh, potential problems here. But Cloak being researched. Are the Wraith just, no, okay, so where are the Wraith? I thought I saw some in production, but I don't see them. I don't see the blue across the map. And so this might turn into a problem. Okay, there's the Wraith in production. I maybe just wanted cloaking first, a second and sorry, a second factory and an engineering bay as well. A quick third base grab from Ninja, recognizing the defensive position and also that it needs to play economic catch up. So I take it back. Maybe the uh, Wraith play not going to pay off here. I was thinking with the timing of it all. Actually, it looks like he's hiding them. Ugh. So wanted to, to build the numbers. Maybe to dodge a commsat was the plan. Thank you for chat for helping me find them. So yeah, just grouping them up for sufficient numbers, but also what this is doing. So this is maybe a misplay of both directions. We have the assimilator being taken down rather than the eggs to lock Ninja in. We have three bases up. Some vultures starting to scoot out. I will say this could very much catch Ninja by surprise because he's going to five factories here, but he still hasn't got his armory out up yet. He's just building his academy. There's the armory just now being constructed. And with cloaking, this could be, this is going to be a lot of Wraith to create a lot of havoc. Starport was canceled. So we aren't going to see, uh, and I, I assume that was initially to think about a drop and then the drop was just canceled potentially upon seeing Starport out on the map. The Marines just having to sit. It looks like that second assimilator being taken down voluntarily on both ends by Locosito, he doesn't have to want to worry about engagements on both sides of the map. Doesn't want to take out that vulture over that edge. But yeah, the Wraith count continues to grow and that could pick out a lot of siege tanks depending on positioning. And again, the quality and quantity of anti-air that Ninja has right now, he's very, very vulnerable because it just hasn't, I don't think he spotted it or has any idea that it's out there. So both players macroing up Right now, Ninja actually way ahead in six workers after grabbing that third base. The Vulture's starting to skew it out. He has a good degree of map control. A third command center being built on the opposite side from Locosito to maybe grab the six. The Vultures just have to wander up to the high ground, but now eight Wraith starting to move out. And this could be a lot of lost siege tanks, a lot of lost SCV because I see absolutely zero anti-air out on the map. The armory is finished, however. I think the Wraith must have been spotted by some of the mines. Now some Goliaths in construction. Our, yeah, one Goliath in construction. That's not going to be sufficient to deal with all eight, however. And if maybe they could even take out that armory before anything else. But right now, one shot in the SCV. And this certainly is going to even up the SCV count as it's going to be a while before sufficient Goliaths are out. And it's going to be another while before there's detection able to range at any corner. A counter Wraith. Okay, it looks like there was a Wraith produced. Otherwise, Command Center canceled and being rebuilt there at the corner. But right now, Ninja's SCV count has absolutely plummeted. As these eight Wraith completely catching him off guard. Now working on the armory, that is 
horrendous news for Ninja. If that armory gets taken out, which it looked like it potentially might, no more Goliath as well. These are plenty of Goliaths to deal with it, but with that Comsat limited range, the Wraith can just move out of detection range, wait for that Comsat to dissipate, and just pick new targets. So now moving to the natural expansion, a few of them, at least one of them falling out of cloak, but that SCV count continuing to be brutalized. Looks like that command center is going to finish at the six o'clock. The Wraith also can just swing around and take control of the six o'clock location. Turrets attempting to be built in the main, but that armory is going to get wiped out. So fortunately there's enough Goliath, but that's also going to delay weapons one and weapons one going to be way ahead. So Loco Cito all of a sudden with a worker advantage, air control quickly is going to be able to take his third base has map control, uh, just every advantage in the world at the 11 minute mark. Oof, I have to say, oof. And yeah, the Wraith now cycling back. The Vulture's desperately trying to plant some mines to at the very least delay this additional base. It looks like Ninja also pressing out to go ahead and capture some Vulture kills midfield. Regardless, it is possible with a, a decent army movement that he could deny that six o'clock, but it looks like Locosito is not going to allow it. If you look at the supply counts with those five factories that have been out for quite some time, where it looks like just a, a fourth and a fifth factory being dropped now, there is a massive supply count lead for Ninja, but positionally up to this stage, it's been Locosito that's gotten the better shot of it. However, his tanks are sieged. Locositos are not, and they are just walking forward to their death, just un not even bothering. I think they're hoping that if the Goliath get wiped out, that would be sufficient to expose these siege tanks. At the end of the day, though, it looks like the siege tank line going to hold. That is going to allow the six o'clock base to be potentially grabbed once at least a troop gets to the six o'clock, engages that vulture and does some damage there. Plus one weapons finish. So there is the weapon advantage for Loco Cito. Close reinforcements here for Ninja. He's done a pretty good job of replenishing that worker count. He's also mining across three bases versus just the one. A, an additional command center I did not even notice has been constructed. The Vulture sees it as it's trying to float out to the bottom left. So Loco Cito trying to gain a further economic advantage with that. I'm not sure if he knows what, honestly, I could see where he wouldn't know what position. We know he's ahead economically, but I could see where he might not be aware. We do have this vulture pocketed right there. I don't know if that's been spotted or not. He's actually down in supply. So there's a lot of troops out, but I don't know that there's enough troops to really make something happen somewhere out in the field for Ninja right now. So at best, he can just go ahead and go for a ground grab and maybe grab a couple additional expansions himself, although he's limping the resources in. Either he's limping resources in or not spending them as well. Loco Cedar actually having a, looks like some gas problems and floating a lot of minerals. He's at the five factory count, continuing to do the five factory and pump with the Wraith. We have a drop ship out, some drops with the vultures could be something to even it. We do have the five factories and a second starport being dropped. The armory has been reconstructed at the very least, but Loco Cedar, yeah, starting to walk away with this. I'm looking for, so the worker counts even, I'm looking for once this base is established and saturated for them, for there to be a quick switch, especially running at the additional base in the overall supply counts. Locosito does need to stay ahead on macro. I think Ninja actually edges him out in that regard. Double drop ship in the field. We'll see if vultures go ahead and plop in there. That could be the X factor. They're gonna have to avoid the Wraith, but it looks like, ooh, the Wraith already running into turrets. One of them being taken out. Big pile of troops mid-map. And they could push. There are angles to push, but I don't know if they're going to be spotted or not. Let's go ahead and go for a zoom view. So walking, ooh, going to walk headlong into the siege tank line. And Ninja actually might have enough at this puncture point to go ahead and push through. And that is going to threaten both the natural expansion and the six o'clock if he does. However, reinforcements moving up for Locosito along the right. He's got that plus one weapons advantage still. And it looks like some mines being dropped to the rear are going to completely obliterate that attack force. And Loco Cito again showing some fantastic micromanagement. Said that weird for some reason. Fantastic micromanagement in these troop groupings. And with that engagement, Loco Cito has the advantage in supply. Advantage in workers, advantage supply, advantage in bases. Going to continue to press this. He has, on occasion, overcommitted his advantages which has allowed his opponents to turn around. I'm not sure if he's going to do that here or not. He's got a wedge, it looks like now, on the western 
corner near that nine o'clock base. Some Goliaths moving out as well. I'm waiting for that drop at some location. Looks like the vultures have taken out. So sealed in the Vespin Geyser to the three o'clock. Not sure if the dropships have gotten to move on or not. So they're just sitting there waiting. Some Wraith being built as well. Troops moving up to the 12 o'clock. Looks like some... Vo <laughs> this is very late. So Loco Seed are not even pulling any gas off the brakes here. Starting to push in. Was going for the eggs. But it looks like that supply depot did in fact spot it. Reinforcements moving across mid-map to drop some mines. And again, provide some territorial, territorial control along that western flank. We have a couple mines providing a little bit of vision if troops move from that location. So this could be cleared out. Right now, the problem for these dropship is they just don't have a path to go unspotted, except maybe to this bottom left-hand corner. Huge bank for Locosito. He's going to need to spend that. 12 o'clock base being secured. Wraith trying to make themselves useful and poke the corner. It looks like they're going to expend their lives for that effort. The barracks going to float across. Going to see a massive amount. Ooh, that's a lot of Goliaths. Honestly, too many Goliaths, not enough siege tank there. Locosito doesn't have a lot of troops in the forward position to win a fight regardless, though. The Goliaths can do some mine clearing just with attack moving with this. They might be able to catch these siege tanks to the north. Plus one, one, plus one armor just versus just plus one armor here. Or uh, sorry, plus one weapons. The Vulture's getting wiped out and Vultures do not beat Goliaths. And the Goliaths, because of their attack dynamics well when they're in groups they can take out the mines but when they're distracted if the vultures can just sneak in they create some disruption where they don't do the best at mine clearing more siege tanks grouping up to the east not a full seal and honestly it's very punctuable puncturable by ninja ninja's done a fantastic job to re-macro and get the macro advantage but again keeps running into walls Wherever he's going, Locosito doing a good job of shadowing his movements and just sieging up just underneath to allow those troops to walk in to just splattering siege tank lines. Engaging with the vultures to the north, it looks like the Goliath should be able to clear that out. But Locosito claiming a massive amount of territory, it looks like he wants to go bottom left as well. There, Well, never mind. There is an SCV hanging out there. That's an option for him. Mains are starting to get thin for both players. It looks like a little bit thinner for... Uh, Ninja, rather than Locosito, those dropships have been an all factor. I was waiting for them to maybe have a presence. Actually, it could be an interesting, cute thing if the Vespin Geysers are wiped out to the north here, uh, down the line, to go ahead and open up a potential drop, make this an island, and take that at the 3 o'clock. Might be a bit risky. Might be a bit risky. Double arm rates. Just now finishing the level 2 weapons, level 2 armor upgrade. Locosito has had that upgrade ever since that armory kill for quite some time ago. The Wraith starting to scoot out, maybe to have some revenge Wraith tactics in this bottom left-hand corner. The Goliaths are mostly out of position because Locosito holding the line basically has his face pressed up against the glass as far as uh, mid-game territory here on Ninja's side, preventing upper right-hand base takes, basically trying to seal him into what, it's got, what he's got. Natural expansion's been mined out. Main is basically mined out, so it's effectively two base versus what should be three at this stage, but that's that 12 o'clock base not yet saturated. Ninja a bit in the red, it looks like his supply depot, something getting canceled or, or wiped out someplace. I'm not sure where. Movement from those Marines in that bunker to that corner. Ninja in the red, but has a superior troop. So if we look at the troop grouping, has a pretty solid troop grouping to maybe puncture that right-hand side. A lot of dropships now moving forward for Locosito to go for... Well, there's... Some of it's empty, but going to go for a Doom Drop to the high ground. Over the natural expansion, there still are SCVs and minerals to be had there. And this is going to cause an interesting scramble for Ninja if he abandons the middle position. That is going to be opportunity for Locosito to re-engage. The Wraith trying to find a location to peck away at, but the Goliaths are there on the defensive over the siege tanks to the west. And now as Ninja withdraws, Locosito could unsiege and reposition to that area that was just evacuated. Also, it's going to be very difficult to evict. Looks like he's found a pocket where there's not a lot of detection. He, it's going to be a challenge to evict these troops uphill without massive aid from those Wraith, and those Wraith are going to take quite a bit of time. Ninja now dropping 50-40 supply. 
correction. It looks like those siege tanks might get taken out just by the Wraith now. Let's see if they decide to just suicide down the ramp to make something useful, but there's no troops left. Well, there's very few troops left in the center. If Locosito wants to continue to press the issue, it looks like he's just going to hold position for the current moment, but there's a lot of risk of a seal there. It looks like there's also an additional drop starting to move in. The Wraith might be able to engage it, and this could be a turnaround moment if, these, if the supply in these dropships gets wiped out. They're now fleeing from the Wraith that have been spotted. The Goliaths are there. One dropship wiped out with a good amount of troops in them. SCVs, what are these SCV doing? That must have been a misclick. They're getting obliterated. I don't think this is the time to, op to free up supply. I think they wanted to be migrated to a different base, but instead just getting absolutely splatted. Two additional siege tanks able to wipe out, wipe out that command center to the north. The Wraith able to intercept, but not before the troops are unloaded and they don't have any cloak remaining. So now this is going to start pressing that nine o'clock base and Ninja just getting breached left and right by the dropship play. Dropship's gonna scoop up and it looks like it go for another overhead engagement. Let's see, I mean, this could honestly go to the 12 o'clock location. There's not a lot of defenses there as well. This is creating a counter opportunity for Ninja where Locosito, well, actually he's got a good, with the troop lead he's got, he's actually got a pretty solid wall. A lot of mines to the upper right. It looks like Ninja just kind of abandoning the nine o'clock and his natural expansion, instead wanting to take territory in the upper right. Bottom left already up and running for Locosito. He's also got a huge SCV lead. The dropships still hanging out here and remaining silent. That would have been helpful actually in the defense of the nine o'clock and the three o'clock potentially. But the mines being cleared upper right. Let's see if Locosito just follows those troops in. And I mean, honestly, that's an army that could get stranded out there location. It looks like currently going to concentrate and has wiped out the 9 o'clock ninja in a lot of trouble now. Honestly, that's probably GG. He's taking some desperation command centers here in the upper left. He's probably, yeah, just going to try to drop two, tuck in and maybe get that saturated. But right now, a huge bank for Locosito. He's max supply. He's got max upgrades. No armor upgrades have been rolling for ninja as well. He's got a the, the, uh, good amount of saturation. He does need to reposition the SCVs to keep that mineral flowing, but honestly, he doesn't even need it. He's got near 8,000 minerals to roll with right here. He's cut the map well in half. He's denied the nine o'clock, which is oftentimes all you need to do is be a base up and deny one. And it's really Locosito's game to lose at this stage, and he still has the drop ships. He can scoop up, unload, and go honestly for a killing blow right on the factory line at the main. Might lose a few troops initially to some, some mine drops depending on location. But that would be another killing blow. Starting to press forward towards that natural expansion might just want to even move in on foot. Needs to be a little bit careful here. He's got siege tanks bunched, a few troops uh, to the south as well, but he could unsiege, rejoin that army. Ninja getting very, very pressed down a lot of supply. That troop count not as low as it might seem. Science facility spotting. They're on the right side, mostly because there's the difference in uh, the worker count right here. A lot of Goliaths to the rear. SCVs are saturating top right, so it looks like these two bases are going to go up, uh, go up. But I'm worried more about the main right here, where we've got kind of a, a double pronged effort from Locosito. Siege tanks coming down from the high ground, and he might be able to swarm actually from two directions as he's now. Yeah, these troops starting to back up. That's going to open up the opportunity for Locosito to unsiege and press forward from the main. And yeah, now this is just siege line tactics from both directions. I'm waiting for these. As soon as these tanks unsiege and move forward, the game is effectively over. And Ninja is somewhat blocked out of the own ramp into his own main that's protecting his factory lines. More reinforcements moving out, it looks like also, and that's secondary problems because he also has to worry about drops, it looks like, to the upper right. And there's GG recognizing just kind of a hopeless situation to try to defend. Locosito sweeps Ninja to advance to the semifinal with some fantastic play top to bottom. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give a like and subscribe. Appreciate your viewership as always. Thanks for listening.